Hello guys, today I will tell you about our very little project about custom object detector which we try to detect Gengel cardoon, a kind of weed which we found at agricultural production fields. And for that purpose, as I told you, we used YOLO version 3. What is YOLO? YOLO is a state-of-the-art real-time object detection system and we used Python as a programming language and YOLO version as a version 3 as an object detection system and we implement this into our own custom data and we can detect custom object on image, video or even live video. And we prepared data set consists of 80 images of Cardon which are taken from the field by using free annotation tool label IMG. You can find link to that and you can check this out. And after that we trained our YOLO version 3 model with a custom data set on Google collaboration tool because we can use GPU with this free tool. And then we save these trained weights to try that model on our test video to check if we can find really or not. And as I told you, first we create a data set. What is data set? So the data set is very simple thing. We are just collecting images, different images of our custom object. They are just image in JPEG format. As you see, by while collecting the data set, it is very important to collect as much data as possible with very different variations, different light conditions, because we are trying to make our detector as general as possible. And this depends on our data. If garbage in, garbage out. So we have to be very careful at this step. And after that, uh, for using YOLO object detector, we have to annotate these images by a human, or by some automatic tools. And how do, what I mean by annotation, I will show you right now. First, we use label AMG. I am using Mac OS, so it can be a little bit different if you're using Windows something like that. So, first of all, my label AMG is installed on my virtual machine and I'm going there. And after that point, I am just opening label IMG and it is a kind of a program. As you see, I'm just, for a sample, I'm just opening um, an image to show you how to annotate an image. For example, this is our image and first we are choosing we are choosing which format we will use because as i told you at the start we are using yolo and we are choosing yolo here and then we are creating boxes with to annotate to show where the object is in the image and we are adding for example the name of our object and every time for example if we have more object samples here we will annotate them too and because we are using just one class we will not need any other names here so for example it's not true but let's say that there that there are two sample of cardoon here and one here and one here and then when we save it, uh, let's save to the desktop for, we are just trying right now. So we'll just close it and close it. And documents, yes. When we save, we create two text files. And the first text files is classes. It contains all the names of classes in a new line. So we have only one class and we have only one single line here. And after that we have our image annotation text. At image annotation text there are 
five row, two row actually, sorry, five columns. And at the first, this represent the class name. For example, we have only one class, so we have only zero here. If we have two class, it can be also one here. And then we have positional data of our object in a given image. You might notice that this is between zero and one because this data is normalized. So the size of the image is not affecting our system. So these are the locations of the objects. As I told you, if you want to learn more about, oops, sorry, YOLO, want to learn more about YOLO, you can check this web page this and the publications to see how they are using how they are using darknet uh, what is yolo and you can have more information about it and as i told you we used google collab for training and what we use at google collaboration tool and the Google collaboration tool, first we use GPU because GPU is very important at image processing projects because image processing is very computational and have a process. So we need GPU, graphical processing units, to make that heavy calculations. And then we mount our Google Drive to that. And then we create a YOLO version 3 uh, folder and then we go inside that folder and then we copy that darknet framework because it is also important not here we are using darknet framework to train our yolo network and then we change some make file here because we will use opencv because we will use uh, gpu we are setting these things and then we are creating a training configuration file which will we which we will use to train our model and then we change something inside that configuration file, which is important, which one is a little bit more important here is, for example, we are setting maximum batches to 4,000 because we are using only one class. And this is the minimum number we can put here. If we are using more classes, uh, we have to increase that number. And because uh, the original YOLO network is trained at the Cocoa data and it has 80 different classes but at here we are using our custom uh, data set so we will and we will try to detect just one class so we are changing to this one and then we are changing some other network parameters here also and then we are creating a train text file which we will uh, add the um, which we will add the address the certain address of our train data set and then we are creating a test txt file because some of the files we, we some of the images we will use later for the test our detector and then we are also setting a folder to um, back for backup where we will save our backup files for example we train the model and then we have some weights and this backup folder is showing where to save that weights and we are writing this data on the object data file and after that we are mm, downloading some starting weights to start on not start from the scratch but we are starting from a certain level and then we are we also uh, we also upload all the images all the data set that we have as a zip file into our created folder and then we open that zip file with this comment and then we are going inside that folder and after that we are using globe and os libraries to read that data and then to write on train and text files our data addresses which later we will use for our training and then we are start we start the training the training part can take really a long time even for 80 even for 80 images it depends on the size of the images and that and uh, for for our for our circumstances it takes it 
took around nine hours. Amen Allah. <laughs> it takes it took nine hours to finish all training for 80 images. And after that we saved the strained weights and then we create a near programming file which we are using OpenCV library for Python to read video and to implement our trained network, YOLO network on that video and we get results. I will show you also video samples. We record a video completely different than our collecting data set part and we implement our trained network on that video file and check if it can really find Cardoon or not. How did we do that? First, our program read the input video by using OpenCV library as I said and then load YOLO version 3 network with pre-trained weights which were pre-trained before with Google collaboration tool and then we read video frames in the loop so frame by frame we change them to blob which we can feed to the neural network and then implement forward forward pass and then we get bounding boxes and then we implement non-maximum suppression because as you can imagine it can detect the same object many times but uh, with non-maximum suppression we can suppress that, uh, that information to find the optimal box and then driving bounding boxes and adding text to that box and then write process frames to a new video file which we will see later on as a result of training we can read just 0.08 average accuracy i know this is not very good but we have very limited data set it is suggested to stop training at 0.06 uh, for increasing that accuracy, we can tweak network parameters to have robust detector. We can, we cannot actually, we have to increase our data set because it is just 80 sample, need more data to increase accuracy. And our, as I told you, our uh, training process took around nine hours of training. I would like to also show you our detection Python file here. As you can see here, we first we, Im we import our needed libraries, we read our video file, and then uh, we create some variables, and then we create our network, and then we take our output layers, and then we set some uh, minimum probability to eliminate weak predictions, and we set some threshold to filtering big bounding boxes and then we create some color variable here to show that on founded object on uh, image and then we, we read video frame by frame and we apply it to uh, first we convert it to blob and then we set as an input and then we forward pass and then we take uh, predictions of the classes and bounding boxes around it and we implement uh, non-maximum suppression on results and then we uh, draw rectangles and put text on images and then we write every image every frame to uh, output video and then we release the video and write release the writer so we saved the video at here and let me show you and the outputs with you uh, one of the first yes the output video is here as you can see i'm just walking on a line of a field and when it detects as you can see it is showing the gangal the location of the gangal on an image and it is also it's also found this one and 
as I told you, there, there are not so much data, so it can create some misclassifications here. Misclassification again. And it founds this Gengel perfectly. And then for the second video, it found this one. I'm walking and there are some misclassification and also a little bit misclassification here and found a Gengel here, Cardoon, and we cannot find it, so there is false negative. And so this is our very little project to try how to build our own custom detector. I hope you like it. We will try to, after that point, we will try to increase our data set. Uh, it will help us to create a robust object detector. Thanks so much for listening to me. I hope you enjoyed. See you.